This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aperos, first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aperos. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today's show with the one story that I'm sure that most of you are expecting us to cover. Even though it's not coming to New Zealand, the official start of deliveries of Tesla's Cybertruck. Streamed exclusively online via X, the short event gave us some key specifications of Cybertruck, including its 17-inch, 43-centimeter ground clearance, 0.335 coefficient of drag, 2.6-second sprint time, and ability to carry one and a quarter to short tons, 1.13 metric tons, and tow five and a half short tons or five metric tons. Beaming like a proud father, Elon Musk claimed that the Cybertruck was Tesla's best product ever and would make, quote, the future look like the future, end quote. But what's perhaps most interesting is the information not shared during the stream. We now know from information posted from the event that the Cyberbeast variant of the Cybertruck will cost a, quote, estimated $99,990 equivalent, while the most affordable variant, the rear-wheel drive, will cost just shy of $61,000 and come sometime in 2025. There's promise of a range-extending battery for the bed as well, although little detail exists on that for now. We can also tell from official documentation posted with various regulatory bodies that the GVWR of Cybertruck is somewhere between four and five short tons. We're keen to see how its unique styling and higher than promised pricing performs in the marketplace. And congratulations to those new Cybertruck owners. Volvo has officially published US pricing for its high-end EX90 electric SUV, with the entry-level EX90 twin motor starting from just shy of $77,000. Due to enter into production next year, the EX90 will come with a range of different configurations, offering twin motor or twin motor performance drivetrains, a choice of two different trim levels, and seating for either six or seven people. All models come with a 111 kilowatt hour battery and a claimed 300 miles, 482 kilometers of range expected per charge. While the EX90 isn't exactly affordable, it's worth noting that its starting price is just below that of the XC90 T8, the plug-in hybrid XC90, although it's a good $20,000 more than the entry-level XC90 ICE variant. Consumer Reports' annual car reliability survey is out, and it's showing that while EVs require less in the way of regular servicing, EVs still have large reliability issues. Polling owners of more than 330,000 vehicles, Consumer Reports says that owner responses show that EVs made in the last three years have, on average, 79% more problems than internal combustion engine cars, ranging from build quality issues to drive motor, battery and charging issues. Despite this, however, Tesla's Model Y, now in its third year of production, is showing significant improvement in reliability, earning the Model Y a place alongside Model 3 in CR's recommended vehicle lists. While EVs were generally slated by respondents for having reliability issues, plug-in hybrids fared even worse, with a reported 146% more problems compared to ICE vehicles. Hybrids, meanwhile, recorded 26% fewer problems than ICE vehicles in the exact same survey. Sticking with surveys, Autolist's annual electric truck survey, which was published midweek, shows some interesting changes in buyer opinions on electric pickups. Surveying 3,600 shoppers in the US who are looking to buy a new truck, the survey discovered that there's a bit of a slowdown in interest in e-trucks, with 39% saying electric pickups were less appealing than ICE trucks, versus 32% saying the same thing last year. 
27% of respondents said they were interested in going electric versus 35% last year. And of potential electric pickups people would choose, the majority said they'd go for a Toyota Tacoma EV, a truck that doesn't yet actually exist. In second place was the Ford F-150 Lightning, although it's interesting to note existing truck owners are more likely to want it than those who are non-truck owners. Fresh from a 10 billion US dollar stock buyback, GM CEO Mary Barra took part in an interview with Bloomberg this week in which she opined on the future of EVs at the company. Promising to boost dividends by 33% and slash spending on crews, Barra admitted that she's personally disappointed with the number of Ultium-based EVs the company has made this year, promising that next year she believes General Motors will have overcome its various quote, manufacturing hurdles, end quote, experienced this year with Altium. Looking forward, she stated that she believes GM has made substantial improvements to EV manufacturing and says lower cost models like the upcoming Chevrolet Blazer will increase the number of EVs sold. Given GM has recently slowed down its EV plans, this frankly gives very mixed messages. Electric vehicles are doing great work to help lower global emissions from vehicles. But the world's obsession with ever larger gas guzzling SUVs is unfortunately eradicating that work. And that's the verdict of a new study published by Greenpeace this week, which notes that while most mainstream automakers are working hard to portray themselves as greener than they once were, thanks to EVs, the explosion in ICE SUV adoption means that the overall emissions of the auto industry is still rising, not falling. It took Volkswagen as an example and showed that while Volkswagen EVs sold through 2022 save 5.6 million tonnes of carbon dioxide per year, the total carbon emissions of Volkswagen SUVs sold to date equates to 102 million tonnes of CO2 per year. We have to change our buying and driving habits. The same week Virgin Atlantic celebrated the first commercial transatlantic flight powered by Rolls-Royce engines running on SAF or Sustainable Aviation Fuel, Rolls-Royce is ditching electric airplane tech. Rolls-Royce's electric jet engine unit had been working on electric drivetrains for eVTOL and lightweight electric aircraft. But the company's recently appointed CEO, who's already cut departments charged with developing developing direct air carbon capture systems and building artificial intelligence that could have helped it design cleaner, greener technologies, says the decision is part of making, quote, choices on resource allocation, end quote. Rolls-Royce is just the latest in a long line of companies backpedaling on an all-electric future. On to more exciting and upbeat news now, with the confirmation that the Fiat 500 will go on sale in the US with a starting price of $32,500. After five years of not being on sale, the all-electric, all-new Fiat 500 is coming back to the US early next year. And while Fiat, or rather its parent company Stellantis, is still keeping official pricing and specifications quiet until next week's official launch event, Numerous sources close to the firm claim that the starting price is now set at $32,500 before incentives or mandatory fees. That price, as some will note, is significantly more affordable than the previous generation Fiat 500e and comes with substantially improved battery pack and DC fast charging. We'll know more with any luck by this time next week, so of course we'll be sharing when we can. The city of Detroit, along with the Michigan Department of Transportation and inductive charging specialist Electrion, have officially opened the first wireless charging road in the U.S., Part of a pilot program, a special Ford e-Transit has been fitted with a wireless charging receiver on its underside that allows it to get power inductively as it drives over the short quarter-mile, 400-metre section of road. It goes without saying that this pilot project isn't going to supply enough power to completely refill the battery pack of a vehicle over that short distance, but if all goes well, the project will expand its length and it could open up in the future 
nature to members of the public, allowing local drivers the ability to charge their electric cars as they drive, provided, of course, their cars have been fitted with the required receiver. You might not know this, but I've been known to don a crash helmet, jump into a harness and enjoy a bit of kiteboarding and scudding, so I know how powerful the wind can be, which is why I'm quite happy to learn about the newly announced Hawk self-charging battery system from Kite Power. It's a Dutch startup looking to revolutionise how we generate and use power. The system is designed as a standalone, fully automated kite that flies at an altitude of around 350 metres above the ground and can generate up to 30 kilowatts of energy to then store in an attached battery pack. The kite is primarily flown at night when there's lots of wind and minimal risk of collisions with birds or aircraft and when paired with solar panels could make standalone fully sustainable charging stations a thing. I think it might be time at last for me to get my power kites out. Before we go to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information that you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can use, and of course, how to get clean, green, renewable energy at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. It was the first electric vehicle Tesla ever produced. And now, as it approaches its 16th year, I know, it's now very much a collector's item in the eyes of many. But for those who still drive their Tesla Roadsters regularly, it's become increasingly challenging to get official Tesla support for their vehicles as Tesla turns its attention to more modern models. Luckily, though, there's an entire cottage industry of aftermarket specialists willing to keep Tesla Roadsters on the road. But around Thanksgiving, those companies got the best present ever from the company. The news that Tesla was open sourcing all Roadster technology and development work. Tesla cautions that much of its internal development work requires some significant knowledge to make use of, but it should make it far easier for those amazing vehicles to stay on the road for as long as people want them to. I cannot say well done to Tesla enough, and I hope other automakers follow suit. And finally, France is known for its forward-thinking attitudes towards transportation, and in the last few years, we've seen some truly great programmes come into existence there. Aside from generous purchase incentives for EVs, we've seen Paris consider implementing new parking fees that charge according to the gross vehicle weight of the car parking. And this week, we learned that a massive €125 million Euros has been set aside by the French Parliament to further fund the nation's already successful cycling plan. Since 2019, nearly half a billion euros has been spent on improving cycling paths and cycling access across France, and now an additional 125 million euro has been made available. Communities seeking funds have until March next year to apply. And on that fantastic good news, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure that you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out in the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, it's time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations. I'll be back next week as usual. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge on this channel. He's been doing a triple head comparison this week, and it's definitely a video you should watch. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.